Sunday morning everybody. Well here I am this morning about a lovely message that I got from Jesus yesterday about being joyful in the middle of trials. And how much more do we need it right now when we turn on the television and everything we read or see around us can be stuff about wars, can be stuff about um, bad stuff going on in the world and it can just be so negative at times. So how do we remain joyful when there are real actual problems going on? Well Jesus has the answer. My children, with tears of love, I desire you to find joy even when you and the world around you is going through such suffering. How is this possible, you might ask, without having a hard, cold heart that doesn't care about anybody else? My children, it is only possible through prayer, because prayer is the power to give purpose and hope to situations that seem without both purpose and hope. Prayer, my children, teaches you above all to trust in the God of love, so no matter what human trial may be going on, to trust. Even my children, in the worst of cases, where there are deaths due to illness or wars or violence, prayer will still give you joy and trust in the bigger plan of God. My children, as a model of prayer, joy and hope, I point to my mother, who even after witnessing my agonising death on the cross, continued to pray to hope and to be joyful. My children, to those who don't pray, your joy and hope may seem crazy and unrealistic because these people fail to see the bigger picture. My little ones, pray, hope and be joyful while the world mourns and allow your joy and hope to be a witness to others of my presence and my power in every situation. Well, praise God. Well, what's he saying there? We're basically saying that it's only through a supernatural grace of joy that anybody could be realistically joyful when they're actually surrounded by sufferings, by doom and by gloom. And at the end of it, he points to Our Lady. He says, how on earth could Our Lady, who stood at the foot of the cross, who watched Jesus get absolutely crucified, how could she go away and, number one, keep hope, keep love and keep joy in her heart? How afterwards maybe was she able to motivate the apostles to not lose faith and to keep on going? And what Jesus is saying that that can only come from the Holy Spirit, it can only come from prayer, but more than anything, it can only come from looking at the bigger plan. And so he says, how is this possible, you might ask, without having a hard, cold heart that doesn't care about anybody else? So, for example, if someone, I don't know, someone got bad news and you're there laughing and joking, well, okay, it wouldn't be appropriate to be laughing and joking in front of their face, of course, but someone could say, oh, he doesn't care at all. So how is it possible to stay joyful, to stay hopeful, but at the same time to be full of love? We well, says it's possible through prayer, because prayer has the power to transform situations and to give situations that don't seem to have purpose and hope to give them purpose and hope. Now, I can give you a real-life example of that. Only two weeks ago, Seamus went missing. We didn't know where he was. Police had to be called and stuff like that because of a difficult situation in Barcelona. And, of course, at a human level, we were all afraid. I was afraid as well. But at a spiritual level, when I was praying, I was convicted by the Holy Spirit that it would be okay. And Jesus put it on my heart so strong to praise. And so I started praising Jesus and trusting in Jesus and surrendering it to Jesus for the two or three days that he was missing and when he was found my heart was full of this interior joy but I didn't get into negativity I didn't get into doom and gloom and post-mortem I kept the joy now the funny thing part of it of course is that because I was so <laughs> because I was so joyful I got accused by other people people who didn't know of not caring I had posted a couple of things on Facebook that I was doing my course and that God was good. We had a Medjugorje day or something. And people accused me of not caring, of just thinking about myself and all sorts of stuff. So this is when Jesus says, to those who don't pray, your joy may seem unrealistic. It may seem crazy. They may even be, even be infuriated by it. Why are you joyful when mommy is sick? Why are you joyful when the world is in such a bad state? Well, what good is falling into a depression going to do? What good is having a nervous breakdown going to do? None. The part of the reason that Jesus asks us to stay joyful is so that we can stay strong, so we can help others, so we can motivate others. It doesn't mean that we won't cry at times and we won't be very sad at times. Of course we will. But what he means is that the Holy Spirit through prayer will rise us out of the sadness. He will put it into perspective. He'll say, well, trust in that person. 
And he even goes to the extreme. He said in some cases where deaths do happen, in some cases due to war, due to illness, due to vo violence, whatever, people will die. And yet he says, keep your joy because you've just surrendered them to God's bigger plan. And so even when Seamus has gone missing, I said to myself, a worst case scenario is he's been abducted and they've killed him and they've kidnapped him. And now he's going to be in heaven praying for me. So praise the Lord, I'm going to keep my joy. Why? Because I've learned over the years that if you get into stinking thinking, moaning, groaning, negativity, fear, anxiety, it does no good. It does no good to yourself. It does no good to other people. It's absolutely useless. And so that's why Jesus says, my little ones, pray, hope and be joyful. While the world mourns, allow your joy and your hope to be a witness to others of my presence and my power in every situation. And so Jesus is calling us more than ever to keep our eyes looking up onto him. Jesus loves us today. Jesus is alive today. Jesus is with us today. Jesus knows all the things that are going on in the world. Yes, at times horrendous things are happening, very sad things are happening at a human level. And yet at a supernatural level, it's all in God's hands. It's all part of his bigger plan. He's with us. He's loving us. And anyone that, of course, does die, which is extremely sad, we have to trust in them. We have to trust in them, God's mercy, God's grace, God's justice, and trust that Jesus is leading every situation. And if you keep that in mind, the God of love, the God of trust, the God of justice, not human justice, but supernatural justice. And if you keep that in your heart, you will be able to be joyful no matter what the situation and so the world more than ever needs people that are joyful. So many times I get when I talk to people, oh, this has gone wrong, that's gone wrong, did you see this, did you see that? Oh, being around them for five minutes is like someone draining your battery, so to speak. And yet in my heart I say, gosh, these poor people, they're branched into radio negativity. They're branched into interpreting everything in a worldly, humanistic sort of way. And I say, Jesus, please help these people because they're going to fall into doom and gloom and negativity instead of being out there being able to motivate other people and being able to help other people to see Jesus. It's like we should learn to see the sunshine on a cloudy day, to see the sunshine on a rainy day, to see the sunshine when there's a storm, because Jesus is the sunshine. So on that note, we're starting another week and there are lots of problems in the world and we need to keep on praying obviously for all the situations, for the wars, the conflicts, for people with health problems, for people with worry, for people with anxieties, people with depression, people who have lost someone, all these situations, let's keep on praying. But let's pray with the heart of love, with the heart of joy, with the heart of surrender, with the heart of abandonment. And we say to Jesus, Jesus, here is my life, here is my day, and who knows, it might be my last day. And if you want to take me, well then beam me up, Scotty, I'm ready to go. So have a great day, have a joyful day, and keep the faith.